Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make a series of random spheres inside the panel. Uh, as you can see here, I can change the length and width to put it even on the borders, uh, the count of the spheres we want, which I'm going to explain step by step and also the, uh, a randomizer, uh, also the minimum and maximum radius if you want to increase that. Uh, finally, at the end, you can bake uh, the solid and use it in your project. Maybe this is like a random panel. And at the end of the tutorial, we're going to make a rectangular array. So you can see the panels here. Uh, if I go back to the parameters and change it, so maybe we can increase the L and W so it doesn't intersect with the borders. Uh, maybe we just make the number of counts uh, decrease that, change the position and the minimum and maximum radius and again change it. Uh, here you can see that the result is going to also change. Uh, okay, let's learn this uh, step by step and from scratch. I'm going to just draw a box uh, in Rhino. You can draw whatever box you want and then we're going to bring it inside Grasshopper. So go to the geometry, B-Rep and right click and set one B-Rep to bring it in. Just hide this here. Uh, the next step is to select the face we want to produce those random spheres from it. So we can use a surface deconstruct B-Rep to deconstruct the faces. And there are six faces. We have to select the face we want to produce those spheres on it. So uh, I'm going to go to the sets uh, list item and pick up the face I want. Uh, for this project, it's just like index 0, but if you want to select it, we can say a number slider between 0 and 5, uh, and that is going to be select face. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and give it to the index, so uh, you can just select whatever face you want to produce those spheres. For this one, it's going to be 0. Uh, after we have selected the face, we just have to make a series of random uh, points on it. So I'm going to go to the vector grid and populate geometry, give it to the geometry I want, uh, the number of points we need, so maybe from 3 to 100. And this is going to be the count of spheres. Okay, so we can just change that here. And there is a seed, so we can say from 1 to maybe 10,000, that's going to produce uh, the random generation. So I'm going to give that to the seed and if I change that you can see it's going to change. Uh, let's also make a part of it, select a part of the surface. Maybe we don't want to put the spheres on the border. Uh, to do that we can also use the surface utility isotrim and use this surface, the part of a surface. Uh, to produce the random points. To do that, we have to right click and reparameterize it to make it uh, from 0 to 1 in the U direction and 0 to 1 in the V direction. Uh, for the domain, because it's a domain 2, we can go to the math domain and construct domain 2. And as you can see here, this is the U minimum, U maximum. So it's for the start and the end and V minimum and V maximum. What we can do here is to give a number between uh, 0 0.1 and 0. Point maybe 45, because if you put it zero, it's going to select all of it. Yeah, we can start with zero. And if you put it to 0 0.5, so for example, it's going to come at the middle. Uh, we can't make any surface from uh, the number. So uh, what we can do here is to start from zero and come to 0 0.4, for example. And also at the end, it's going to come from zero to 0 0.4. And the minimum surface we can select is like uh, actually 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is 10% of the surface. So remember that this number is the maximum we can reach. Uh, I'm going to give that to the U minimum, U maximum. And for the, it's going to uh, be the same, obviously, but here I'm going to make it from one minus X. So it's going to be uh, zero. Uh, if I give this 0 0.1, it's going to be from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, because as you can see here, it's going to go one minus this number. So you can control the U and we can do the same for the V 
So you can select a part of that too. And that's how we can select a part of it. Okay, now with that we have the points. Let's make a sphere, surface sphere. And uh, we have to give a radius. Obviously the default is one, which is really small. But let's make a series of radius, random radi radiuses for the sphere. Uh, I'm going to go to the set a random. The number of random values is the same as the count we produced here. Uh, the seed, again, we can... The This is going to be the sphere radius, right? So I'm going to say radius generation. So that is going to change the radius here. And the range is going to go to the math, construct domain, and make a domain for it. So for example, I'm going to say it's from 1 to 100 with two decimals. This is going to be minimum radius and maximum radius. Okay, I'm going to increase that and then we can give this random to the radius. Uh, obviously it's too much for this project so I'm going to make it really smaller. I think that we have to stick about like 13. So just change this number based on your project. And maybe this is good and decrease the maximum radius and change the position. Maybe we decrease the number of them. So we have some gaps and that's it. Maybe increase the minimum to be between 3 and 8, for example. And that's how we make the spheres. And we just have to find the solid difference. Intersection, shape, and solid difference between our solid and the spheres. I'll just turn this off. And you can see that this is going to give us the final results. So... If you wanted to change that, you can, if you put these, these numbers to zero, it's obviously going to also uh, produce those spheres on the border. So remember that you can change that here. Uh, we can uh, change the face we want to produce the random spheres on it. So maybe you want to produce that uh, on, the, on this surface. Maybe it's like a case for a computer or whatever you thinking of so remember that you can also change the position with this index uh, another thing we can control is the number the position maybe increase this one because it's smaller spheres and when we increase it if we increase it it's obviously going to just collide uh, and give us something like this. So if you want to make that with more intersection, maybe increase it to 20 and minimum to 10. So that's also going to give you uh, a, a good result. Maybe we can put this to zero and zero. This is going to slow down the process because it's obviously going to find lots of intersection for this project, okay? And now if I bake that, you can see that this is also an interesting result we're going to get from this algorithm. Uh, okay, to make the array, I'm going to just go to transform array and use this box array. Give this to the geometry. The cell is going to be the same box we used here. And it's going to give us a X, Y, Z count for the control. Obviously, we have to uh, don't array that in the Y direction. But as you can see here, the, there is 3 in the Y. Uh, the Z is 2 and the X is like 4. If I go check out, this is X. So I'm going to give a number slider to this 3, 2, 12. Okay. Uh, the Y count is three. So obviously this is going to be converted into the Y count. I'm going to put that to one. And the Z is obviously another number slider we can control here. So we can just increase that. Maybe we want to make the panels. 
and now you can play around even having the box array it's going to slow down the process so uh, what I prefer to do is to turn this off and turn uh, the solid difference on uh, remember that uh, the intersecting of the spheres is also going to slow down the process so I'm going to um, disable the solid difference turn on the spheres uh, make the minimum radius a little bit smaller obviously as we talked about this before increase the U and then make the solid difference right decrease the number of points uh, increase that a little bit so we can get something like this maybe and that's it that's how you can just uh, change their location change the radius and if you want to see the final results you can just enable this and see how it goes uh, i hope this tutorial was useful if you have any questions just ask below the listen and thanks for watching see you next time bye